Hi class, we're on the next section, chapter 2.3. Um, today we're going to talk about linear equations. Um, so we're going to not have any nonlinear terms present in our DE as we go through and solve. So <clears throat> this is also a review. This is also something that's generally covered in the Calculus 2 course. Um, so generally, if a first order DE is not separable, then it will be able to be put into the form of a linear equation, um, which we're going to go over right now, right? So <clears throat> linear equations have the form of a function in x times your first derivative of y, generally we would write this as y prime, plus another function of x times your y equals a, another function of x. Now, um, this h of x, it can be zero, it can be a constant or it can be some function in x. So the places where your y's show up is either as y prime or as y times a function of x, but it won't show up on the non-homogeneous term, which is the term um, on the outside, right on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Now, a lot of times our DE will not be into this form, but we can manipulate it to put it into this form. So again, you have to be aware of um, what your equation looks like. Um, maybe this term is on the other side. Maybe, you know, there's different ways of manipulating things. But generally, you want to put it into this form in order to start working um, if it is not separable, right? So if it's not separable, you want to try to get it into this form. So <clears throat> let's go through the process on this general form here. So first thing we want to do is we want to put it into what is called standard form. So standard form is when you have your highest order of your DE isolated, right? So it has no um, function coefficient. So you're going to divide everything by this first function of x. So you're going to end up with dy over dx plus gx over f of x times your function y. And then on the um, right hand side, you'll have h of x divided by f of x, right? So you should end up with something like this. So we call this the standard form, okay? Here, this can be kind of confusing. So we'll just take this uh, now rational function. It could have been a rational function already, but dividing it by f will definitely make it some sort of a rational function, unless it happens to cancel out something. Um, and we'll just give it a new name. We'll call it p of x, okay? It's an easier way to look at this. Same thing with this um, non-homogeneous term on the, the outside of the equal sign. We'll just give this um, a substitution name as well. We'll call this q of x, actually. And in this case, we'll give this um, capital letter function names, right? So capital P and capital Q here. Uh, the standard form of that is kind of just having the lowercase f, g's, and h here. Uh, for the substitutions, we'll give them the capital letters, right? So our standard form then, after making this substitution, is just our y prime plus some function uh, in x times y equals some function in x, right? So we're really just kind of trying to make the y prime um, isolated in the beginning of the DE, and then everything else is still kind of in our standard form where some function of x um as you see here, right? So this is a, called the standard form. Once we have the standard form, we can use this p of x function here, and we can use it in what we call the integrating factor. The integrating factor will be some function of x, right? So we basically have e raised to the power of the integral of p of x uh, in terms of x, right? So we're gonna integrate um, with respect to x here. One thing to note is that we do not include a constant of integration here, okay? So we can talk about that when we go through the example, but it's not necessary to include um, the constant of integration. It doesn't do anything. It really just ends up turning into constant multiple anyways. So it's not necessary for us to include that here, right? So following here, right, we're gonna take this function here, this integrating factor, and we multiply the entire equation. So we're going to have e to the power of the integral of p of x with respect to x times my uh, y prime, my dy dx, 
I'm going to multiply it times this term, the px of y, right? And I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply it on the right hand side also times my q of x. So it will look like this. So here you see I have my integrating factor and I'm multiplying it, as I said, times each term in my standard form of the differential equation. Okay. So again, here you should already have calculated this and simplified it fully, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing here, okay, and we're going to apply the product rule of differentiation. So it's kind of hard to see for a lot of people, okay, but this is actually the end result of the product rule, right? If I have uh, y times e to the power of the square root p of x in terms of x, right, and I differentiate that, this is the result that I would get from the product rule. I would get my first function, e to the power of integral px, right, times the derivative of the section, second function, which is that uh, y prime. Then I would have the integral, or I'm sorry, the derivative of that integrating factor, which is this e to the power of p of x in respect to x times p of x, right, from the chain rule times that second function. Okay, so the product rule here, differentiation with respect to x, is going to be f prime g of x, right, plus f of x g prime of x. So here, that is the product rule. This is this form. Okay, so I'm going to use this relationship to do, to basically undo the product rule, right? I'm, it's still the product rule, but I'm, instead of taking a product and differentiating it, I'm going to take the end result of that and bring it back to a product and say, hey, uh, this is the derivative of a product. So here I take the first function and then here I take the second function. So to undo the left hand side, um, I'm basically just taking uh, what I have here and I'm just going to write it in terms of what I have, right? So I have my first function and this one for my second function and I'm differentiating it with uh, respect to x. So remember this is a function in x and y is a function in x. So when I differentiate this, right, and I do the product rule, I am going to get um, the derivative of y times this function, which is what I have, right, y prime times my integrating factor. Add to that the derivative of this, right, so an exponential function, you take the derivative of the exponent and you multiply it on the outside, so that cancels this integral and it gives me p of x, right, times my integrating factor, and then this one stays the same, right? So I'm doing the product rule here, okay? I'm just undoing the product rule. So from here, our next step is to uh, integrate both sides. So um, from fundamental theorem of calculus, right, the integral of the derivative is just going to cancel out the derivative. Um, but here, there is no derivative, so I'm going to actually have to integrate this with respect to x also, okay? So integrate both sides of the equation. So that just cancels the d dx and leaves me with what I had before. Um, and then over here, I'll have to integrate this product, right? The integrating factor times this q of x function with respect to x. And that will give me an integrating factor. So this notation is a little wrong here because I won't get the constants of integration until after I integrate. But um, you guys are smart, so you know what this means, right? Um, so from here, I need to solve for y, right? Because my idea, my goal is to get an explicit solution. So I would like to say y of x equals whatever I have, right? So I'm going to divide by this integrating factor on both sides. Um, and instead of writing this as dividing both sides, I'll just write it with a negative exponent because that's a little bit cleaner, right? So again, notice that this has to... Um, divide the constant of integration also, right? So <clears throat> what we have now is a closed explicit form for my solutions, okay? So you can go ahead and use this formula from now on if you want to, right? But it, it is going to be rather important that you understand um, this five-step process, right? Um, because we will be doing problems later on 
where we really can't just jump to this in order to get to the solution. We'll kind of have to go through the process of solving um, by putting it into standard form, finding the integrating factor, right? This integrating factor comes up quite often, actually. Um, we're going to use it in the next in the next section as well, chapter 2.4. So it's important that you understand what this integrating factor is and how to use it because it will show up again um, in other places, right? <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do this and apply it to an example, right? So here I have my DE um, and I have an initial condition here, right? So this is an IVP. Notice that, um, and you should probably do this on your own, maybe pause this video and see if you can separate this equation, okay? So see if you can get all the X stuff on one side and all the Y stuff on the other side, and you'll notice that you can't, okay? This is a non-separable equation. You cannot use um, the method from the last video, from the last section, 2.2, .2, on this DE, which is why we have an additional method. And since we can't separate the variables out, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use our next method, which is the one we just learned in this section, and try to use an integrating factor. Okay. Um, so if you notice, it's in a slightly different form than what we want. If you notice, we don't have um, this form here, where <clears throat> it is a function times my y prime plus some function in x times y equals some other function in x, right? Here, I don't have the y alone in my example, okay? So <clears throat> I would like to try to separate these out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this 3x here, right? Um, and so now I have a function times my y prime plus a function in x times my y equals some other function. So it's not in standard form, but it is in the form of a linear equation. So the next thing I want to do is put it in standard form and divide everything by this x squared plus 1, okay? So now I have my derivative isolated. I have 3x over x squared plus 1 times my function y. And then I have um, my h of x function, or my q of x function, I should say, on the outside. right? So from here, I take this middle function, and I call it p. And then I can find my integrating factor. right? So my integrating factor is e to the power of the integral of this function with respect to x, right? So I need to integrate this. So if you notice, we've actually done this before. Um, in the last video, I have to make a u substitution here, right? So I'll let u be x squared plus 1. Um, the derivative of u will be 2x, so du is dx. But notice that 2x isn't going to help me because I have 3x's. So what I'll do is I'll just pull out the uh, the 2 to the other side for the x dx. And then I can have a, um, a fraction coefficient in front, right? A, a fractional multiple. So my integral will be e to the 3 halves times 1 over u du, right? When I integrate this again, I don't need my constant term. So that turns into the e 3 halves natural log of u. Um, if I did have a constant term here, it would just turn into a constant multiple of this integrating factor, and it'll end up just getting factored out anyways in my equation because um, it'll show up on both sides of the equal sign, and I can just cancel that out. So I don't need that constant of integration. But <clears throat> notice that this is basically uh, e to the natural log of u to the power of 3 halves. We know e and natural log cancel each other out. So this simplifies to u to the 3 half power, right? Now again, um, I started off in the world of x and y. Right now I'm in the world of u, so I got to re-substitute um, for u. So this will be x squared plus 1 to the 3 half power, right? So that's my integrating factor. I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply it everywhere, not here from the original equation, but here after I um, put it into the standard form, right? So I'll multiply this times dy dx. I'll multiply it um, times this p of x function with the y, and I'll multiply it here with my 3x over x squared plus 1 function. So when I do that, this has a power of 3 halves. This has a power of 1 on the bottom with a power of 3 halves on top, so I end up with a power of 1 half. Okay. 
Here I have one on the bottom, three halves on top, that ends with the power of one half as well. Right? So this is the form I have now. Okay, I know it looks very, very confusing, but the nice thing is, is that after we multiply by our integrating factor, this is always collapsible by the product rule of um, differentiation, right? So we take the first part of the first term and the y in the second term, right? Because if you notice, the derivative of x squared plus 1 to the 3 half power will bring us down to a constant of 3, right? Times the inside function still, and the derivative of the inside function, sorry, it'll give me a 3 half on the outside. The inside function um, differentiates to 2x, so that 2 and the 3 halves, the 2's cancel, so you get a 3x, x squared plus 1. So this is just a product rule, right? So I take the first term um, from the first term, and the second part from the second term, and I throw those together, and it always work like that, right? So now when I differentiate, when I integrate both sides, this will cancel, and I'll just have to do my integration here, right? Okay. So here, <laughs> this is what I have. Here I'll need to integrate, so I'll have to go through my forms of integration. Um, I can do a u sub again if I want to. Right, I can say um, let u be 2x plus 1, and as we saw before from this u sub, right, I get an x dx term, which I have here, x and dx. So this will really just turn into um, 3 halves integral of u to the 1 half power du. And I make that u sub, right? 1 half du is my x dx. So the x dx turns into 1 half du, and the u is a one half so I have the three um, constant here and the one half constant so I'll have the three halves on the outside you and the one half and the left hand side stays the same right so now I can integrate this this is a very standard power rule of integration so this will turn into um, the reciprocal of three halves so that'll basically cancel and this will turn into three halves right so this will be two thirds times three half u to the 3 halves, right? Plus that constant of integration, I resubstitute my u value here. So I have x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves y equals x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. And then I divide both sides by that x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. So this part turns into 1, right? And this turns into c over x squared plus 1 to 3 halves, right? So I can redo it like this, or I can even say c times x squared plus 1 to the negative 3 halves if I want to clean this up just a little bit, but this is fine, right? And again, we're not done because this is an IVP. So I have an initial value, a set of initial conditions that I can plug in to find c. Again, um, it's always easier to do these last, right? So I will get 2 out when I plug in 2 here, right? So 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5, um, and I got C. So I'll just subtract 1. So I have 1 is C over 5 to the 3 halves. So C is 5 to the 3 halves, right? So I'm going to put this all together. My final solution is 1 plus 5 to the 3 halves over x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. So since they have a common power, I can just say the whole thing is to the power of the 3 halves. And that's how we do our integrating factor. All the problems are always the same.